Hello everyone. Uh, this is Adulal Rai, the chief inst instructor of Kids program of DLM. So we are in the live right now, and we have brought a new guy. He is from uh, Brazil. His name is Alison. Oh, okay. So Alison, you introduce yourself first. Okay. Yeah. Do you, do you know? So thank you for for coming for being here. Uh, my name is Alison, and I'm from Brazil. Um, I'm a, you know, I'm a graduated in Portuguese and English, but now I'm teaching, you know, physics, totally crazy. I'm a military and married, I have one daughter and, you know, and many other stuff. You know, if I keep talking about me, so it will take, you know, one day, <laughs> you know, okay. yeah. So that's it. Yeah, I'm from Brazil and I love English. I'm a fan of English. And it's really nice to be here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank you. So thank you very much for your nice introduction. So like bro, you know, many people from my country. Okay, so let's welcome again our, like, let's welcome our another guy, Zos, oh. my boss. Hello, man. How are you? <laughs> yeah, how's it going? How are you? How yes, everything is doing great. Okay, are. so what about you? Good to see you. Good to see you. I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Well, doing wow, better. Wow, nice to hear. Okay. Yeah, good to see you. Good to see you, really. Thank you very much. So, like, nice we are in the you. live. We are in the live right now. So, could you please introduce yourself, those? Who is Jose? Those. Oh, oh, okay. oh, oh! You are. Um, do you want me to introduce myself? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. Good. Well. Um, okay. I'm Jose. I'm from. Venezuela in South America. Uh, currently living in Mexico now. I'm here with my family and my daughters and my son since uh, 2010. So it's been like 30 years now living here in Mexico, which is another, as you all know, another uh, Spanish uh, speaking country. I'm a geologist engineer and uh, I work where I had, I have worked mainly for the oil company as a geologist. And uh, right now I am uh, sort of retired at home, enjoying my life and stuff like that. Yeah, I'm trying to keep myself busy. Yeah, because this is another stage of my life where for anyone like me, we need to stay busy and, and do different things in order to keep on going. And what else? Well, my, my English journey, my English journey, uh, this is my second stage of my English journey that I started back in 2018. Uh, so it's been what, like five years so far, kind of. And during this stage, what I've been doing mainly is trying to communicate, connect and interact with people uh, in order to improve my speaking. Uh, yeah, and you know, taking advantage of, of technology and all the things we have in our hands nowadays to, uh, you know, work on work on our um, English in, as a whole. Yeah, what else? Uh, yeah, that, that's about it. I th I, I think. <laughs> oh, okay. Yes. So thank you very much. For, nice to know you. So like uh, we are uh, in live right now and. Some of my friends, some of my followers, they would like to know how can they improve their spoken English. So like as you started uh, your learning journey before five years back, but you have improved tremendously. So could you please share your uh, journey or could you please share your ideas? How can people improve their spoken English? Oh, okay. So, okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Okay, let me let me tell you. Let me be. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about my uh, English uh, journey as a whole. You know, because I have to break it up into two different stages, really, and they are so different and also so separate in terms of time. You know, chronologically, they they are two uh, scenarios, but uh what i've been doing since 2018 up to this point has been different uh because uh 
of the uh, the approach, you know, that we we have the chance nowadays to do to make make an approach. Yeah, to make an approach in terms of how you are gonna use all these uh, resources, you know, that we have available right there now in this era of technology. But what I'm trying to say, what I'm trying to uh, mention to you is that. I went, I got, I got have mentioned to Allison, I went to college in the U.S. That's where I got my degree uh, as, a, as a geologist. I went to college in the United States, you know. But it was a long time ago, a very long time ago. I went to, I, I lived in the United States and went, you know, while I was going to college, uh, from 1975 to 1980. So I, I remained there for almost six years, you know, kind of. Yeah. The first year I went to an English academy there in Massachusetts, you know, for a whole year almost, just, just to learn a language. And then I went to college, you know, and uh, yeah. And it was a different um, scenario because you know, I was sort of, uh, or I took advantage of the, the the environment, and I did what it, what, we, what what anybody has to do. You know, I got immersed in the language. I socialized a lot with uh, natives. I had girlfriends and, and and friends in general. You know, and despite the fact that I used to speak Spanish with my friends during during. Uh, you know, parts of my days, but we used the English a lot because we we were really immersed in the language, you know, uh, in terms of uh, interacting with natives, which is really important. But then I went back um, at the end of, uh, it was like the end of 1980, I think, 19, or in 1981, 1980, yeah. In during, I think about at the end of 19. 1980, I went back home just just to work, you know. I was hired by this uh, oil company, so I went back home to Venezuela. But the thing is that since 1980, you know, until maybe 30 years after, I stopped gradually, you know, I stopped using the language. You know what I mean? Uh, mm -hmm, I, yeah. I, I I started, I, I didn't use the language practically at all, you know, on very few occasions. And uh, and I realized one day back in December of 2017, I, I came to a point where I said to myself, hey, Jose, you really have lost your English and you don't have any confidence I told myself I told myself that that because I was at um, I was at the beach with my wife and I was sitting next to um, an, an American couple that was right next to us and we we started talking you know and exchanging in English and that's when I realized that I was doing terrible you know that I had lost most of my English I didn't have any confidence. I couldn't find the words uh, and and things like that. You know, I was probably sounding terrible. So that's when I realized, oh my God. Well, it's it had it had been like 38 years after I went back home, you know, and practically during those 38 years, I didn't use the English language. So that's when I realized that in life, whatever whatever you have as a skill, as a knowledge, you know, uh, whatever thing you have learned, and you know, to to do something, an ability, skill, knowledge. If you don't use it, you are gonna lose it. You know, that's an, it, it could be an ability with your hands. Or, or something that you uh, learn as a knowledge that you used to do or or use, you know, uh, 
like in this case, a language. So if you don't use it, you are going to lose it. So I realized that I, I practically was uh, losing my English, you know, completely. Yeah, you know, uh, in, yeah. in my case, it's the same, you know, sometimes when I uh, when I, I don't have time or maybe I don't have a, a opportunity to study or to read something in English, I feel that, my gosh, you know, when I go back, it's not the same. And I feel that my English, you know, the my English level you know, decreased something, you know, decreased a little. And uh, that's the reason we need to, you know, to keep practicing, yeah. practicing, practicing, you know, but I believe that the problem, uh, you know, the problem, you know, the reason that some people can achieve fluency and the others not, it's in my point of view, you know, it's the way that they are, uh, what they are doing. I mean, the, the focus, because uh, what they are doing, sometimes they take the book, they keep reading, 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 listening, listening, listening. It's good, okay, it's good, it's important, but it's necessary to speak. And we go back to the point. So if we don't open our mouth and try to speak, so we are not going to improve your speaking. So you can, in my case, what happened, I went to a, an English course when I was 18, 19 years old. I did a good English course here in Brazil, and I finished, I studied for six years, I finished the course, and in the end, when I had the opportunity to speak, I wasn't able to speak. Why? Because in the class, all the time, you go there, you sit down, and you listen, and listen, and listen, and you do some exercise, writing. It's good, great. I learned a lot, the vocabulary. It was really nice. But when it was time for me to be face-to-face -face with someone and express myself in English, it was a disaster. It was a disaster. <laughs> I suffered a lot because of this. And that's the reason I need to do something. And almost, you know, some people get frustrated and they give up. But I decided to do other stuff. I decided to focus on uh, another course, focus on speaking. And then now, you know, I'm texting uh, every challenge that it's possible. Okay, let's participate. The group to participate of them, let's participate. Let's go, let's go, let's go. And I was trying to force myself to be active as much as I can. And yeah, that's, that's great. You know, like, immersion is really important to improve our spoken English. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, like, I, like, I had a question uh, for both of you, like, those who are beginners. So, if they would like to improve their spoken English, so what they can do to, imp to improve their spoken English. So as you guys have good English speaking uh, ability, so those who would like to start their speaking, they would like to improve their spoken English. So what would be your suggestion, guys, for them? Okay, hold on a second. Uh, okay, let me just increase the volume here. Then... Go ahead. <laughs> Okay, so just you go, you go first, yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, um, <clears throat> once if you if you if you have if you have gone through uh, some type of uh, training or or you have if you have taken an English course and stuff, it is good. It is good, and I I encourage people to take advantage of whatever they do with their English, if they think they don't have an opportunity to, to use it by speaking it, you know, uh, try to do your best in terms of uh, getting some grammar knowledge. That, that's, I don't, I don't, I don't want to enter into a um, discussion that is now a trend uh, or a visual, uh, um, um, uh, some people visualize, or some people have an hour. An, um, some people say that grammar is not important. I would say to all of you, to anybody, that grammar is relevant to have some knowledge of grammar, some basis of grammar. You know, you have some. You have to have some foundations of grammar for you to have an idea of how the language is structured, you know, 
how it goes in terms of the the, the, the way it is arranged, you know, structured. Yeah. However, however, you don't have to uh, worry about getting deep into grammar. That's not the case. That's not what is required because you are going to keep learning grammar along your journey. You want to realize that how grammar uh, pushes you ahead for you to improve your your speaking. You know, in terms of comprehending, uh, yeah, what to use, what not to use, what fits better in a in a sentence for you to convey your message in a clear way. But then, the thing is, you know, if you if you have a formal uh if you attend some formal uh course of english get the best out of it in terms of a little bit of grammar uh expose yourself to do some reading to see how you can handle the uh, an acquired vocabulary and if you can write do some writing is good and do a lot of listening you know we got to do a lot of listening but all those things are our our pillars, you know. Like I always say, those are our pillars, you know, our columns mm -hmm. for us to, you know, kind of like like a rocket to the moon to take off and start using all that knowledge, trying to find your way to reach a level where you can be conversational by speaking, you know, by speaking, by speaking. We have to use the language. We have to produce language, you know, because like Alison said, there are people out there that are very good, at, at, uh, maybe have good grammar. They, they read a lot and they they write very well. Uh, the way they redact, um, I don't know, whatever, a letter or email is good. And uh, they are, have a lot of uh, good abilities comprehending you know and listening but if those people don't speak they're gonna be stuck you know they're gonna have a hard way for for them to uh you know let whatever they want to say out that's because that stage where you you need you want to be conversational the only way to approach it is by by speaking you know do your do your best to start using the language as much as you can in a daily basis on on a on it's on a daily basis if it, if it is possible you know and uh, and see if you can find your ways to arrange your mindset it's a matter of mindset also you know it's a matter of attitude it's a matter of coping with your fears. It could be your shyness, being afraid of uh, making mistakes, being afraid of being judged. Do you know those 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 things? I think those are things that are in in most of us, in most learners when we are being or or getting to that first stage where we need to use the language by speaking it. You know, by using our yeah. speaking ability. I think it's in everyone. You know those those are uh, those uh, uh, condition, those situation where you have fears, you are afraid of this and that, and you think you are shy, you are an intro, intro, introverted, and and you know, uh, in most learners, that's that's something that we have to overcome, and the only way to overcome it is by uh, finding your opportunities or taking advantage of opportunities where. You can speak, you know, do some speaking, start doing it, start speaking up, you know. It doesn't matter if it is uh, uh, like it is, you know, uh, maybe broken English, whatever. But that's the only way, you know. There's no magic formula. People have to understand that there is no magic formula to if you want to be conversational, you know. The only thing you have to do is use your English, you know, have your output, by conversing, by using, by speaking up. And uh, it takes a while. There is a transition period for every one of us. And it depends, it depends on 
in many occasions, you know, for, for most of us, depends on uh, the environment that surrounds you. You know, if you are with people that are going to be uh, not only patient, are going to be there to motivate you, to encourage you, you know, to ask you to say whatever you want to say, doesn't matter how it comes out. Yeah, that's that's also one thing that is important. If you like, like right now, if people find these environments, you know, here in communities, I know if you don't know anybody in a community, you know how you're gonna feel, you know, a little bit apprehensive, or shy, or afraid. Uh, it's, it's natural, you know, it's very natural. Yeah, you, you know, they, they don't have idea yeah. what they are losing. And, you know, <laughs> Yeah, with this environment, it's something that is really nice. I, I believe that the mistake that uh, I can see easily when uh, people are studying is, you know, in the beginning, they study a lot. Uh, vocabulary, listening, pronunciation, but they don't practice speaking because they say, oh, it's in the beginning. Am I going to, you know, get more knowledge? get more experience when i feel that i i'm prepared i'm gonna participate but you know they don't understand that the you need to start in the beginning you need to start there so if you're starting today you enter in the meeting and you say something it's like a baby you know you start with some sentence and we start you know listening 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 a lot the others and start to answer and with a small, you know, a small uh, sentence. I don't know, just try to participate, to be active and speak. And because speaking, you need to use your mind, your mindset to create sentence. And all the time you're producing and you're using, you know, you're trying to put the, the words uh, into your output. You're developing your output as well. And, you know, but if you don't, use your mind if you don't practice if you don't speak it's impossible it's impossible you no, can like, like yeah. alison i i found one thing like uh, uh mr azose you know like he pointed out some great thing for example we need to listen a lot and we have to read a lot yeah. because until uh, we don't read so we don't get any sense what to speak so that's why reading must and listening must because that is our comprehensible input so until we don't listen, until we don't read, we don't get any sense, we don't any idea, we don't get any idea what to say. So that's why listening and reading is really very, very important. I, from my experience, I would say. Yeah. So like uh, in my initial days, I would uh, read a lot, I would listen a lot. So because of that, nowadays I can speak English. So without input, we don't get any, like we don't, have any expectation that we will have good output so that's why we need to have input first then output it's my uh, like uh, it's my ideology like we have to take input first then output so what do you think alison like as you said no, you know it's uh, you, in the uh, increase your input it's so so important but i believe that the, the problem is uh you have your input you're developing for one year two years three years four years ten years 15 years and the people oh i'm not prepared and my gosh you know you are for studying english for five years six years and you keep saying that you're not prepared but have already tried it no so maybe your input it's so you know it's a huge you are in a good level but you need to to practice you know yeah. if you and in, in a in, during your day during your day you need maybe you know eight percent no not eight, eight, eight yeah eight eight percent you need to uh, to keep listening yeah vocabulary because we need to have a base to yeah. to create our sentence but we need to practice we need to to speak as well and people keep saying oh when i get when i feel prepared am i going to participate and after one year two years five years ten years and we have the same skills and people in the end of the year oh my dream i wish that 
I could speak in English, you know, it's the same, you know, every year, <laughs> at the end of the year. Yeah. yeah. Do, do no, you know, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a, uh, you know, I, uh, we have to admit that it's, it's not an easy matter. I mean, when I say it's not easy, it's because it requires, I'm talking about developing your speaking abilities, it's not easy. It is, yeah, it goes, it goes gradually, you know, it is a process where, where you start by putting all those parts that you have developed together. When I say is that you, you, you tried for those parts to fit, you know, like, like, a, like, a, like a jig puzzle, you know, you know what a jig puzzle is? Where you fit uh, pieces, you know, together, you have to find. So when you are beginning to do some speaking, is when you are gonna try to make those parts to fit. What are those parts? What are those sections or, or um, part? Let's say whatever you have learned by reading, like you said, whatever you have learned by reading, whatever you have uh, acquired as an input by reading, for example. It could be, like you said, both, you know, vocabulary in, in, in some part. Yeah, uh, you might just focus on uh, words, for example, terms, by reading. Or, or, like you said, you know, like Alison mentioned also, if you kind of expand your focus, you might get both, you might get the the ideas uh, or the sense of how the language is structured you know when you read when you read oh okay i see how the language is uh structure is used by by, by when you read you know so, oh my god you know or you might just focus in 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 specific words or terms that you want to learn yeah but reading or why not at the same time you are also absorbing the knowledge what, that, that is coming for what you're reading, you know? You know, the knowledge of the ideas in general, you know? But of course, that, but that's another part. That's knowledge. Yeah, and uh, that's one of your pillars. If you listen and if you are, you know, you say, well, okay, I want to imitate. I want to repeat. I comprehend very well at some stage, for example, what, what you know, they say whatever in a podcast. Uh, yeah, that's true. But when you are speaking, you you without realizing <clears throat> it, probably you are putting all those pieces together, you know, right there. And you are going to make them fit, you know. Okay, how, okay, what do I have to say? What's my vocabulary level? What's this and that? How I'm going to structure my sentence, my idea? Mm -hmm. Am I applying? Am I using good grammar? But well, depends on your grammar knowledge, you know, and things like that. So that's it's quite a job. It's quite a it's quite a thing, you know, when you when you need to start speaking. It's not easy. <clears throat> so, and then comes the uh, how, how can I put it? Comes the, the the other things that in, that enter or, or take place, you know, in, in the process when you want to speak, is what you have in mind, what you have in your brain, in your archives, and how how are you gonna synchronize at some point your your brain with your mouth, you know? Have to synchronize your I don't know your ideas, how your words flow and stuff like that. And then how how am I, how am I going to pronounce words that I don't know? Or the words I know, am I going to pronounce them the right way? So that come that comes your your mouth muscle, you know? How are you gonna pronounce? Are you gonna pronounce clearly? Are you gonna pronounce it well? So, and that happens at the same time, you know, simul simultaneously. When you are using all that, you know, all of your knowledge, what you know, 
your brain, your synchronization, your mouth, and then how you're going to uh, put your ideas together. So it's quite a job. It's quite a, it's quite a task. And that's why, like Alison said, it takes dedication. It takes consistency. Mm -hmm. it, it takes how you find your ways to do it as much as you can on a daily basis, if it is possible. Mm -hmm. But there is, yeah. a there is a transition where you have to convince yourself that if you want to take your English to upper layers, you have to do the task. It doesn't come by itself, you know? It doesn't come yeah. like... Like, yeah. like you have pointed out the great thing is also like, uh, that we, you know, like you, that your are you well said. Because some of my, uh, some of people from my country, they would like to learn spoken English in just three months. But you well said, like, this is a, a non-stop process. You, you said, like, uh, this is really not easy to improve our spoken English. This is a long, long, a lifelong process. So if we maintain consistency, so then definitely one day we'll be a uh, master of spoken English. But uh, some people from my country, they have misconception that they will do a spoken course and they will be master of spoken, uh, in speaking English. So what do you think about that? Just do you have a misconception about that, that uh, they will be able to uh, master of spoken English in just three months? So what would be your suggestions uh, for them? Uh, for them? Yeah, so you know, when, 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 you, yeah. Yeah, when mm -hmm. you are, um, when you, we do in the order that we do, like uh, we learn the, the grammar, vocabulary, and in the end, we, you know, we keep postponing the day to start speaking. Uh, what happened for those who are lazy and for those who are so afraid for the shy people, they keep postponing, postponing, postponing. And what happened with almost, uh, like, you know, almost always they keep postponing and they don't develop their English. They keep studying, but they don't do anything to develop uh, their speaking. And when you do this, you know, the, the opposite, when you start speaking, I believe that it's really nice. Obviously, you don't know the structure, the sentence, you don't know the position uh, of, you know, the preposition of verbs, you know, which one uh, you're going to put the preposition or not. But during this, you're speaking, during your conversation, you're going to learn. So if you, you pay attention, uh, you're going to uh, um, listen. For example, the guy says, oh, instead of, instead of. So if you are in, you know, if you take your mind like, oh, after instead, you're going to use of. Why? I don't care just all the time when it's time for you to use instead you just put off and that's it keep going keep using and that's it you know and it's so nice as well because you're gonna learn and you know practicing i believe that it's obviously obviously learning grammar it's so important because you know it's as jose mentioned it's one pillar you know of learning a new language we need to you know, you know, grammar and how can it be possible you keep speaking and you don't know the correct pronunciation of the words? How can the others will understand you? So, uh, but I believe that is speaking, practicing and uh, trying to correct yourself day by day. I believe that it's good, you know, and that's good as well. But uh, I don't know, it, it's really, it depends on the person as well. It depends on the person, but I believe that it's, it's good if you the correct way the perfect way in my point of view you need to learn all of all the all the pillars at the same time even if you're learning if you're gonna start today you need to speak today how shadowing just read out loud trying to do a lot of activities open your mouth don't keep listening 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 keep your um, you know book open and that's it. No, we need to to open our mouth and we need to practice to be more active. That's it. Yeah. And people keep postponing. So the results, they won't come. Yeah. If, if you keep doing it. And yeah, that's my point. Yeah, of like, uh, Alison, I, I, from my point of view, listening is really important, very much important. Yeah. Because when uh, when we're going to talk with uh, like uh, 
native people like from uh, America or from UK. So when we cannot understand them clearly, so our speaking has no value. Maybe we are fluent English speaker, we can uh, explain everything clearly, but when we cannot understand native people listening, so no one will listen uh, like listen our voice. So I would say listening must. We have to improve our listening first, then speaking. It's my my uh, opinion, own opinion, but you guys have might you guys might have another opinion. But my opinion is we have to have good listening power first, then speaking. Because maybe my speaking is broken. I cannot explain everything clearly. Maybe I have grammar errors. Maybe I have no uh, perfect uh, vocabulary to speak. My speaking is broken. It doesn't matter. But when I have good listening power, when I can understand listening native people, like from UK or Australia, whatever the native country, when we can understand them, then they can understand. Maybe we are uh, speaking broken English. They can understand us. We can do communicate with them because of our good listening power. So I, I would say if if someone would like to improve their language, I should I, I will tell them that they should focus on the listening first. Listening first. So without listening, no value of, of our yeah. speaking. So you know, for but, example, you yeah. But but I believe that the, the problem is uh I totally agree with you. Listening is so important. Uh, but I believe the problem is those who keep listening for all their lives, you know, something like oh, this. Okay. That's yeah, funny, yeah. You know, th there is no, no reason and they keep listening, listening, listening. And when it's time for them to, to speak, what will happen? Oof. I, 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 I know obviously, obviously to be a disaster. I, I remember when I started uh, learning how to speak Spanish. I learned it a lot uh, after, you know, after what happened with me with in English, because as I had said, I was in a in a school and I didn't practice my my speaking, I didn't develop my speaking skills, so I stay in the same position when it comes to speaking, and my listening and my vocabulary were increasing day by day, but when it's time for me to speak, it was a disaster. After six years, disaster, disaster. And when I, I started learning Spanish, after four months, I was speaking. You know, after mm -hmm. listening after listening a lot, every day I was listening, 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 listening in order to, to learn the correct pronunciation of the words. Mm -hmm. And I was listening to podcasts. And suddenly, uh, I have a lot of friends like Jose, who, who is a Spanish uh, speaker. And we, I have a, other friends, and all the time I, hey, can we start speaking Spanish in maybe five minutes, ten minutes, and we are going to, but yeah, we needed to start uh, listening first in order to have a, you know, idea about the language, but we need to start speaking, you know, after, but the, the problem is, you know, people keep listening, 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 hey, how long are you studying English? Oh, three years. But didn't you start to speak? No, no, I'm just listening. I'm not prepared. I'm afraid. And yeah, <laughs> you know, that's the problem. <laughs> no, that's yeah. true. You know, like, yeah. 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 Uh, please go ahead, Jose. Yeah. No, I, I, um, I agree with, with Alison in the thesis in, uh, no, I agree on, agree in. <laughs> I'm not sorry. I agree. <laughs> I, um, yeah, I'm, I'm sure. Yeah, that, that's one of the tricky parts. Preposition. Yeah. Are always so tricky. Uh, I agree with Alison in that uh, on that thesis that listening and listening and listening is not is good, but it's yeah. not enough because if you if you don't speak you are not producing English. You need to produce English. And the only way to produce English to have a product is by, by speaking. Yeah. But listening, I also agree with you, Dural, is a great ability to develop. Do you know what? Why? Because we get so much from developing our uh, speaking, I mean, listening, listening abilities. 
let me tell you one thing. You are so exposed nowadays to listening because you listen to podcasts, you listen to uh, when you watch a movies, you are you are listening to what they whatever they are saying. Uh, you are uh, listening to YouTube um, videos, yeah. so you are exposed. Your ears are exposed to uh, listen English. Uh, you know, in, in many occasions and situations, you know, you are listening and listening and listening, and that's great. or if you are a music lover, sometimes some people say, Oh, I develop my English and my speaking abilities by listening to music, you know, to the lyrics and stuff. That's great. That's really great. And and you know what? There are people that develop their abilities, abilities, their listening ability, abilities, I'm sorry, by uh getting deep in to getting lyrics from, from songs, you know, that are really good. That are really good. They develop that ability in a great way, but that doesn't guarantee you that you are gonna be a good speaker unless unless you speak, you know? Uh, but that's, and from listening, like you said, you get so many things because you are not only getting uh, the ideas, you are listening to, uh, for example, natives, you listen to the way they pronounce, the way they sound, you get intonation, you know, when you by listening, oh my God, how beautiful they sound. I can I can hear to the melody of music, of the, of the language and stuff. And, and then you might just go ahead and imitate that by shadowing, doing some shadowing on that's a good thing, you know, because you are putting that listening into your mouth a little bit by shadowing, by by imitating, you know, by uh, mimicking, you know, but still you are not using your your whole uh, apparatus, you know, in terms of what you need to speak. And uh, but that but, but listening is a great and you know what do like to finish our our listening ability is something that we as a learner we keep developing you know along our ways sometimes we are challenged by listening to a, a I don't know a native speaker with a different accent and we go oh my god uh, this guy or this lady is from I don't know. South Africa. Let me see if I really get what she's saying, you know, or somebody from England or from Australia, uh, or even among us, among us, non-native speakers, we challenge ourselves, you know, constantly because we're listening to different accents, different sounds as uh, learners, you know, from, from every corner of the planet. So that's another way to develop our listening abilities. Even that way, uh, uh, um, developing that ability to distinguish and understand different accents and uh, and sounds. Yeah, it's a great ability to develop. No, yeah, that, that's uh, that's right. Yeah, like we have to listen. Like we have to keep listening. We have to keep reading. Uh, reading as well as we have to start speaking as early as possible so this is really important to master of the spoken any language not english language yeah we have language. to immerse ourselves to reading and listening first then as early as possible if we if we are not afraid uh speaking english then we have to start speaking as early as possible yeah. so it's really important so what do you think guys about that yeah. let, let, let me say something please very quick uh mm -hmm. Right now, uh, uh, at this moment, you know, this uh, era, this era of technology, you know, there there is so much material out there to take advantage of. You know, we have so many resources, so many material, so much material, and uh, it's, it's a great moment to yeah. develop your 
your skills, you know, all of them. Whichever one you want to develop, whichever one you want to really improve, it's, it's a great moment that we are now going through in terms of learning language. You find, you, you know how it is here on the internet. You find whatever you are looking for is right here. So that uh, condition that we have now, or that uh, that many tools that we have now in our hands, is a way, or they can be used by each one of us to develop our abilities uh, more quickly. You know, if you really wanna get into it, if you really want to dive, if you have the, uh, uh, if you make the effort, you know, if you do the task. You can even be like me, for example, during this stage, you can even be, be a self-taught learner. You know, we can learn on our, on our own. You know, we can be, we can be self, uh, how do you say, so we can go through a process of self-driven learning because we have the resources. We, we can read here, we can write, we can listen. We don't need a teacher. I mean, of course, there's a moment where we need, we need a guidance we need to listen to uh, English coaches or or somebody who has experience teaching and learning. And we can just, you know, get some pieces of advice from those people for us to uh, keep, you know, making step forward. And, uh, and maybe those people there, like you said, in your country, that they believe that by listening and doing this, they can learn English quickly. Well, the we have the resources in front of us here. So it depends on how you use them, depends on what you do, depends on what kind of uh, orientation you have or, or guidance, like I said before, uh, to take advantage of your time and of your resources. It can really make your uh, learning process uh, quickly, you know, quicker in this case. It's not like yeah, that's past. true. Like uh, as as I say, you said well. Like uh, we are uh, full of resources nowadays, but yeah. we have to know how to use those resources to improve our yeah, language. right, yeah, yeah. You know, right. We need you needed to take care nowadays because yeah, we right. have a lot of teachers. Uh, we have Instagram, we have Facebook, we have Telegram, we have a WhatsApp, we have a meet a lot, a lot. That's the reason. In my point of view, my point of view, it's really hard to embrace the world. So we need to choose one or maybe two. OK, just to choose one group trying to be active. OK, if I don't like the group, just go to another one and, you know, focus on only one. Uh, I remember in the beginning that I tried to to listen, I don't know, maybe three or four podcasts at the same time you know during the day it was uh, you know trying to listen once and two and sometimes i got crazy you know oh just let's take only one podcast focus on it and which podcast is it's it's better for me okay am i gonna choose this one which curse for me it's better okay this one and keep focus on it and that that's my case in that uh, we have at our our group the, the english takeover and all the time I trying to, you know, to be active, to manage the, the group. And it's really hard to be active in another group, you know, just be active there. Then for me, it's really nice. It's really nice. I really appreciate everyone who uh, who is outside and doing a great job with other groups. Great. But in, in my group as well, we are always here with our, you know, arms open to everyone who wants to participate as well yeah but like that's great you know like you well said like you uh, learn something deeply like uh, when you uh, think that some something is good for you like it could be podcast audiobook or something you learn that deeply that you repeatedly listen you repeatedly listen so yes yeah, really great okay so like last time i have a question this is the last questions in our meeting today so you both of you has like both of you have good pronunciation skill so like all of my bangladeshi people have like a tendency 
how can they improve their pronunciation skill so yes you guys have good pronunciation not good best pronunciation skill so you guys please tell us how can we have pronunciation like you guys so alison you go first yeah in my point of view uh, we need to put our English in practice um, and the way that uh, we can develop our pronunciation is uh, listening a lot because the way that you learn the correct pronunciation and obviously put in practice and we need to open our mouth and practice our our English, our pronunciation in, in meetings. And one thing that I, I like to do as well is to uh, when I'm listening to podcasts, I try to, uh, you know, trying to do some, you know, shadowing, trying to repeat that at the same time. In the beginning, I I use it to um, to diminish the the speed of the of the audios in the beginning because it was really hard for me to follow, and now uh, for me it's much better. But obviously, it depends on the topic. Some topics for me, they are so hard and they have a lot of, uh, uh, you know, specific vocabulary that I don't know. And it's necessary for me to diminish, uh, to decrease the speed. Uh, but obviously, if you want to develop your pronunciation, we need to open our mouth. So you can keep listening, listening, okay. listening. And if yeah. you keep listening, 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 I'm always saying that you're going to be a good listener. If you don't practice, if you don't open your mouth, nothing will change. Yeah, so open right. your mouth. Yeah, so you did follow shadowing technique to improve your pronunciation. So uh, let's listen from uh, Zose. So what did you do to improve your pronunciation? Okay. Do, do you know, Dulal, uh, at this stage of my learning, you know, of my journey, one of the things I'm really, really concerned is how to improve my uh, pronunciation, you know? Wow. Pronunciation is key. It's a key thing to be understood. It doesn't matter uh, your, your accent, for example, you know? Uh, in this case where we are sometimes more worried about the way we sound in terms of our accent, we need to worry more about how we pronounce so pronunciation is is key you know it's a key thing for you to uh, be understood and and you know uh, and make sure that by pronouncing uh, the right way sounding clear you're gonna convey your message yeah so that's one thing I'm working on really working hard on how to better off my but the way I pronounce. It takes, you know, that's, for pronunciation, I, I don't go for phonetics. I don't know anything about phonetics. I don't, I know very little. Do you know phonetics, when you see a word uh, written and then you see those little, those signs, you know, like things like that, like, like snake or something, that's how you, you should, use those signs to sound properly when you pronounce a word. I don't go for phonetics. I don't know anything about phonetics rules. I go more like you said, Dulat. That's when listening comes in handy, comes, comes, comes in handy, and it is even vital or crucial for us to improve our pronunciation, you know, by listening listening closely of course of course if it's a native it will be better and then repeat then imitate listening close to the way a word is pronounced you know but like Alison said we need to take into account if we if we if we listened or if you watch a video of a, of a teacher an English teacher an English coach that teaches pronunciation you know pronunciation is good because you might just take uh, or get ideas of how you are going to modulate modulate your your mouth you know in order to pronounce well 
and, and then we start getting things, you know, when like, you know, like the TH, you, we need to go like that. We need to, get, you know, start getting those uh, things along our ways, you know, and that's good. That's good because that is going to be put together for us to pronounce well. And like Alison said, we need to really, uh, you know, be serious about realizing that for us, for you, for me, for Alison to pronounce well, we have to go and do all kind of uh, muscle movement, you know, that English takes. That's the hard part. No, our our mouth, mouth muscles, you know, they have to be really used uh, in in the proper way. Because sometimes, sometimes we are kind of betrayed. You know, they were betrayed by our by our mother tongue, by the way we sound, by the way we use our phonetics, our our muscle um, mouth muscle when we speak in our mother tongue, and we pretend to say something in English, doing or moving our mouth the way we do it for for uh, Spanish, my case, or Portuguese, or you, uh, your language. And that's not what it takes. You know, you, we need to do something different. We need to move our, and that's key, you know? And that's one of the things people have to realize. That's why when you see some, uh, phonetics or, or uh, pronunciation coaches, you know, they go like this. You know, because that's the way you have to move. Yeah, that's the way you have to move your mouth muscles, you know, in order to produce the sounds in English as close as they should sound, you know? So that's one thing, that's a key thing. And yeah. we like, usually... Uh, not you, you yeah. said well uh, you said well something like uh, if we would like to improve our uh, pronunciation so definitely we have to listen first closely everything yeah so that's why listening comes for us you know like such definitely for having good pronunciation that we have to listen carefully everything deeply then we have to repeat that mimic that shadow that this is yeah. how we can improve our pronunciation yeah, yeah. because because there is another theme it, it is it is it is uh, it takes uh, it takes some uh, you know work. We have to need, be aware of what we are doing to sound clear. Listen, it's not only it's not only looking like a like a clown. Let's like say a clown. You know what a clown is in a circus. You know those guys that are in a circus. Like, nah, nah, nah. Yeah, you have to look like a clown. You know, like you are. You know, you do, doing like that, but also in order to produce sounds, you know, like the TH or whatever sound. But then, then comes the other part, which is just uh, composes every word that you are going to pronounce and has to do with where to make that stress on that word. That's also crucial. So that's when, you know, you go, a little bit more advanced in your in your uh, task to sound clear in terms of pronouncing well and then where you are going to put the stress on, on on words so it comes together try to pronounce clearly but then try to make the re the the the, the, uh, uh, the real sound of the word and that is related to the stress because if you don't put the stress on the right syllable, you know what word you are trying to pronounce, but then you might just be misunderstood, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, I don't know. It's, yeah, so yeah. Hard, it's so hard to remember where to stress a word, you know, where the stress is from. Yeah. You just memorize that by listening that's it by listening. yeah you know you know uh let's go back to the about the listening how you're gonna know the correct way to speak one word if you never listening this yeah. word so yeah. we need yeah. to know the correct pronunciation so after listening after knowing the meaning 
So we needed to try to put in practice and speak the word. So it, it's a it's a sequence, right? And yeah, that's that's right. Uh, it's a, just one example. Imagine that you are learning how to play a sport. I don't know, maybe tennis. You know, just imagine tennis. So you have the best, the best uh, instructor there to help you, and uh, and all the time he's uh, teaching you the correct way, and you learn it everything. But if you don't go there, if you take uh, everything and trying to practice every day with the ball and hit the ball the correct way with the angle and the, the strength, you're not gonna learn. So obviously the theory it's important because it's a kind of a guide for you. But if you don't go there in the practice, you know, okay, you know how to do in the theory, but if you don't go there in practice, nothing will change. So that, that's the reason uh, between the, the difference between listening and practice uh, and speaking. Listening is so important. It's a guide for you. That it That's needs right. to come first. And after speaking. And after speaking. So it's it's so important. Both of them. Not to listen, 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 listen. Nothing will change. Yeah. yeah. That's right. That that's great. You know, like everything uh everything that's uh, uh, when you learn something. That's what we have to uh, like put into practice, you know, like yeah. when you know the pronunciation of a word, then we have to put that into practice. Then we will be master of that word uh, of uh, right pronunciation. These are the things, yeah. Like as uh, Azo says, that he wanted to say something. Please go no, ahead. I was just going to reiterate, you know, I want to reiterate, I want to make emphasis and go with you, second you what you said a little while ago. Mm -hmm. Listening, like Alison just also refer to listening in terms of pronunciation listening is is right you know? yeah it's essential yeah. but essential, yeah. but if you really go deep into it in terms of repeating you know imitating uh do, you know, do shadowing read out loud you know repeat 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 Repeat, repeat, you know, just like, uh, I don't know. And and then you are going to start doing a much better job by pronouncing words, you know. The yeah. only thing is that the only thing is that when you start remembering, even mastering some words, some sounds, for example, there is going to be always, it happens to me, words that you know you know, that you remember because you read that word in a book or something and you want to use that word, you know, whatever word. And that's when, uh, if you don't really know the way that word is pronounced, it, it, you might just mispronounce that word because, uh, you know, it's a word that you are not sure how it is pronounced. But that's when you have to look it up, whatever, do your task and make sure. And it happens to me a lot. It happens to me a lot in terms of I know many words in, in you know in, in my vocabulary archive, but I don't use that word frequently and I want to use it sometime, but I'm not sure about the pronunciation. It is natural, you know. It's natural. But when you listen and listen and listen to uh, I don't know, it might be informal conversation, casual conversations, whatever, that's when you get many things, many sounds, and you just have to repeat them. And probably when you speak, you're gonna do a good job, you know, by pronouncing words in, in a correct way. And uh, yeah, I'm not talking about uh, doing the way or, or the things natives use when they go for connected speech, you know, and things like that. That's another part because that's, that's, that's getting into uh, the way they use the language when they speak. But we don't, we don't have to worry about that, you know, uh, at first. We need to worry about pronouncing clear, clearly, you know, and yeah. then we might just go into some other things like, like that, like I just said, you know, like, 
for example, uh, things like, oh, oh, I, I want to go there. For example, I want to go there. And you might know now that you got to say, I want to go there. As long as you say clearly, it doesn't matter. And then you get, get into that old stage. But listening and pronouncing, pronunciation, they go hand by hand, really. But yeah, you have that's to right. produce the word. You have to imitate. You have to mm -hmm. walk, and repeat and repeat and do your best, you know. And yeah. And yeah, sure. Okay. So yeah, thank you very much, Jose and Alison. Like we have got some comment. Uh, uh, let's, let's see what kind of comment we have got from our <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so wow, that's awesome. All listens in one screen. So I'm not listen. You both of you are listened, you know. <laughs> yeah, Nahid, Nahid, it's, Nahid, uh, yes, Nahid, yes, Nahid, yes, yeah. Nahid was with us in our last meeting. Yeah, was great meeting. yeah, a great speaker. Yes. Yeah. Great and speaker. okay, so listen, let's see. Lovely discussion. He's my boss. Oh, he's oh. my boss. <laughs> Nahid, yeah. he's uh, my boss. Nice, yeah. Yeah, nice to meet you, Nahid yeah nice to meet yeah. you no like he, he he taught me many things you know but he's my boss yeah yeah you know you know what Dulal and Alison, we have reached a stage a level uh, uh um, you know in our in our journey and you know we have to look back and think how can we help others learners you know that are behind us or in a in a level lower than the one we have reached and we have uh, gone through experiences uh we have stumbled upon so many mm, things you know uh, that we that we have uh, you know now know and and mis we have made mistakes and so how can we really encourage motivate those that are coming behind that and they are finding ways you know to uh you know to make steps forward in the journey but they are they don't have the uh, the guidance the orientation they are afraid or they think they think is an easy task it's not an easy task but it's a it's a it's a really enjoyable task you know because that, that gives you the opportunity to connect and communicate and interact with people you know make friends or whatever and exchange share many things you know and, and you know you and you are going to have the language knowledge as a tool in your in your pocket for whatever you want to do in your life you know maybe you want to get a promotion you want to travel whatever so what to do what to say to them how 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 can we encourage and motivate them and of course let them know that everyone in this journey has to do their task and their task is you know be in contact with the language on a daily basis do whatever is in, in your hands to do and try to i don't know find occasion for you to yeah. change well, you know it's it's so easy nowadays because we yeah. mention about it we have a lots and lots of groups lots and lots of podcasts and if you go to instagram face my gosh we have a lot of teachers giving you you know tips and tips of in english uh, i believe that we need to take care uh when it comes to you know english teachers and you know some tips because uh, what happened what happened nowadays is uh, you see one tip a uh, vocabulary tip and another one another one and after maybe three or four, so you can't remember the, the the first one, because we have a lot of information and we need to take care. That's the reason I just uh, like to uh, to take only one tip, and maybe I I write it down in order to really uh, I'm sure about that that information. It's on my on my mind that I'm studying. Okay, it's good. But I don't like to take all the information. You know, it's really hard to embrace the world. We are human beings, and and we are men, and you know we can't we can't do a lot of things at the same time. You know, it's only once. Yeah. 
I don't know you, but I, I suffered a lot. You know, we have a lot of uh, things and we need to take care of them. We just to need yeah, to like Al Alison, I would say if someone would like to improve their English, they need a mentor support. So like uh, there are uh, there are thousands of resources out there in YouTube, in Google, but I don't know which one is perfect for me, which one is best for me in my initial days, in my yeah. beginning days. So I don't know, like uh, if I go to someone, I, hey, how can I improve my listening skill? They will yeah. suggest me, hey, just listen BBC, CNN from today and you will be master of listening after two months or three months. I, la just, I cannot understand anything when I listen something like cnn or bbc so when i don't understand anything so how can i get go go ahead it's impossible yeah. for me you know like after some days i will lose my motivation so that's why we need more, more like a teacher support or mentoring that's so that we can improve our uh, listening power speaking power high basically we have to know how to learn how to study look like, for example how can we how can we improve our listening power we have to know there is a beginning. We, yeah. How can we improve our speaking? There is a beginning. We have to know who has knowledge about the, about these things. We have to take some support from that man. So then it will be easier for us to learn a language easily. Like it yeah. could be English language. It could be other yeah. languages. But, yeah. but you know what, Dulal? <clears throat> like Alison said, we think that there is no excuse, you know, because of the amount of... Uh, resources you know opportunities to uh, practice the language yeah. we say there's no excuse and uh, like we always say Alison in the in the group say why then people keep complaining that they don't find moments or opportunities to speak you know that's what we say why they keep complaining but it depends uh on the case I mean, the situation could be different for, for many of those people right there that we don't know what's their uh, situation or, or the circumstances you know, they, they, are, they are going through. It means that uh, they probably don't have, listen to me, either the right mindset, you know, in terms of what they want to do with, with their... English learning, uh, you know, activities. They don't have the right mindset. Maybe it's a matter of attitude. Uh, it's a matter of, uh, you know, they don't have the right um, knowledge. They don't have any clear, clear path in terms of what to do. So that comes with the, what you just said. What you just said, Dulal. It is good at some point to have a, like a mentor like like somebody who would uh, guide you, give you some orientation on not only what to do or what resource to use. Yeah, that could be a way to uh, help many learners. You know, for for them to clear their their uh, mind in terms of what they want to do. They want to learn, but they are not making the right steps why why are you why aren't you making the right steps you know or the steps you need so it might be a combination of things right there sometimes we say like i just said guys there's an excuse you have a lot of resources and don't complain anymore you have so many communities where you can get you know but but i don't know maybe it's everyone has a particular situation why they are not really getting into it and it might be that they are either lost they are confused they are overwhelmed you know also oh my god i read i listen to podcasts but i don't whatever so yeah it is good like you say Dulal, if if you have somebody with more experience uh with an advanced level or or a higher level people who have gone through a lot of uh, things or stages or, you know, situations, you know, good for you to uh, be there and, and give some uh, orientations to 
uh, people and tell them that if they don't have, because that's, that's one thing that comes first. You have to have the right mindset of what you want to do with the learning. Why are you doing it as a hobby? And you, and you just show up or you do one thing, you know, like, I don't know, once a week or once a month, you're not going to learn like that. You have to understand that it's a matter of uh, keeping yourself in contact with the language on a daily basis. If you really yeah. want to make those little steps, you know, that it takes. It's, it's, yeah. a, it's a long process. Yeah. yeah you, you know, Jose, you mentioned about, uh, uh, you know, something important. You know, we need to go step by step. And I, I would like to mention about what Dulao mentioned about the CNN and BBC. It's a hard vocabulary. You know, sometimes it's a deep vocabulary and it's really hard to understand. And uh, one thing that popped up, you know, in my mind, it was about love. If we love what we are doing, we have we find a way to uh to to study on it so sometimes when uh, uh if we like and for us it's it's better for us to you know to keep it going and when it comes to podcast that it's so important to choose one podcast one book one audio i don't know something that it's good for you because in the beginning we like english but now we are in a different stage. We love in English. And uh, when we are free at home, what are you going to do? Take a book in English. Yeah. Participate in a group call. And we are going to, you know, send a message in English to a friend. And we, are, we, you know, brought English to our life. And that's the difference between us and, you know, some people who are, you know, starting. Right? And so in the beginning... I believe that it's so important to to choose uh, maybe to choose one curse that uh, the person like and maybe one podcast that it's more comfortable. So if uh, CNN, it's a harder podcast, trying another one, at least in the beginning to, you know, to be more comfortable and to learn that English, it's uh, it's really amazing, you know, and can bring you a lot of a lot of happiness and you know since i uh i started you know having the the meetings on tuesday uh, you know i i participate of the meeting not because i want to practice english anymore but because i want to see my friends and and have fun and so so like yeah uh alison and uh Jose, so i'm uh sorry to say like i we are having to finish our meeting here because we are having a bad weather you know, so that's why I'm having to finish my meeting here. And thank you very much. I'm really, it was nice discussion with you guys. And my boss said, thanks. Okay, so my boss said, let's see. <laughs> thanks, our honorable guests. And I'm really, okay. I'm really over the galaxy to have you in my meeting. So you guys invite, like, you received my invitation today. So I'm feeling really great. So thank you very much for receiving my invitation and join me today. So have a good time. Bye bye. Bye bye. My pleasure. Thank you so much. Really. Thank you. Okay. Hello, yeah. Alison. Bye bye. 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 Thank you a lot. Wish yeah. You. Thank you. Really nice. Yeah.